to, to start back a little, certainly what, uh, what, what Susan described is very, much, very similar to what uh, we at Toronto do uh, with books in terms of um, early on setting the for establishing a print run uh, format uh, prices, um, getting, a, getting the catalog information through the author information sheet. Um, in terms of, um, and so when the, the marketing department as a whole takes it over, is usually, uh, well, after it's been cataloged already, which is uh, always a marketing responsibility with which we uh, work with the author. But um, maybe a month or two before the book is to be released, uh, the, the marketing department will have a will have a sit down about a few a few upcoming titles, and uh, we'll discuss the strategies that we're going to be taking with those titles. Um, the as all as with all scholarly publishers, we have a, a broad range of books. Uh, some some that are have very small print runs and are cloth only that will pr primarily go to libraries uh, or people with a very special interest in in an area. Uh, some that will have more um, what we call course potentials, so we'll be orienting that towards um, pitching to professors to try to use into courses, and others with with trade uh, with what we might call crossover trade appeal, and that's what we the kind of thing we would be pitching to uh, our sales representatives and um, the larger book retailers uh, in Canada and throughout the world um, to carry in, uh, in in mainstream bookstores. So we do that, we have that meeting, but usually about a meet, month or two before the book is to come out. Uh, when, the book, when the book does come out, uh, the things that happen are um, we send out the complimentary copies, and that's uh, desk copies. Uh, in our author, author information sheet, uh, we ask to, uh, the, the author to identify 10 people to whom, who might use it in course, uh, who um, by sh their sheer importance, they're, they're holding the book in their hands might generate more sales. Um, or uh, we also, at that time, do review copies for journals and uh, publicity. Our publicist will be working with the author at that point to uh, see what their travel schedule might be. Um, while touring is occasionally an option, what we try to do more often is work with the author to determine what they're, where they're going to be, what their schedule is like, and we, where we can put them and what media we can contact to uh, increase the uh, interest in the book in the given market where they happen to be. Um, I can't speak for, for all the presses. P advertising is something that can be a touchy issue. Um, and this is something we try to, um, where we try to moderate the expectations of authors in terms of where they'll see advertising. A, uh, a small ad in the Globe and Mail about that, that size in the book section is about $1,500. Um, so certainly doing that kind of thing for every book or too often is, is makes the price, pro, price quite prohibitive. A single column in the New York Review of Books, um, which comes out uh, twice a week, or every two weeks? Uh, yes, yes. Um, that's about $3,500. Um, so, Obviously, that's not that's not something that uh, the sales of one of one title um, can can really uh, pick up. So we, we try to be selective with advertising. Certainly, group books together in a logical order um, and uh, find venues or find values uh, where uh, where it happens to make sense. Part of my job is often to um, to. Uh, let an author know uh, what, what they can expect from their, their press. Uh, and lots, we, we, have these expect, we have expectations that range a, a great deal. Some people think that they're, some people don't want to do media at all. They're very nervous, they're sheepish about, uh, about appearing to be too, um, too commercial perhaps. Or something. We have others who think that uh, their book on Byzantine hermeneutics um, is going to be appearing just about everywhere, um, and you know, why wouldn't they have an interview in Harper's? And, um, so the things, so the, the things that we always try to explain is what, what you should be able to expect from your publisher. You should be able to expect that the publisher will be, firstly, of always uh, on the other end of the phone, on the other end of the email, to be able to answer your questions. Um, and one of the things I, I, I know the problems we have is that have, publishing 160 books a year, I, I wish I were more in contact with all our authors about, uh, about what we're doing at, at any given time, but that, that becomes impossible. Um, but I should, you should, 
the author should be able to expect the, the publisher is there to answer the questions. If they have a proposal for some kind of marketing uh, scheme that uh, they get hurt, uh, we hear them out and that we uh, offer um, as much as we can do to, toward that idea, uh, as much as is reasonable. Um, it should expect that a certain number of, of complimentary copies go out, as, as I mentioned, desk copies, review copies, uh, that uh, we have uh, a reasonable amount of um, media contact, and, uh, and I'd like to think we do, and I know our, my colleagues do as well. Um, they should expect that, uh, that we, have, uh, we are able to display books at, at conferences, Hopefully you've all been, uh, visited the book fair, and uh, certainly um, exhibiting is one of the major, uh, major ways of marketing a scholarly book, uh, and uh, it is something that publishers go to great expense to do, and uh, we put a lot of stock in. Um, and, but at the same time, uh, don't call uh, five days before sell, saying that you're going to be in Barcelona giving a talk, and will you have somebody there to sell books? because that's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, that can't happen. We, the best, you know, what, you, what you can expect is to, have, to be able to have uh, marketing materials um, available. We'll, we'll provide you a flyer with a discount and where the customer can potentially um, buy sales, buy books throughout the world. Most, most of us will have distributors um, in uh, different regions that uh, they can send book orders to. Um, Publicity is, is publicity for a, a scholarly book. Um, again, it depends. The, the success of that again depends sometimes on the author's expectation. Uh, if you expect, again, if you expect an interview in Harper's, that's probably not going to meet your expectations. But if we can get manage to get uh, uh, you to appear as say a talking head on uh, on CBC, then I think then I think we've done pretty well. Uh, and um, to get the book out there is, is certainly not easy. You'll see even in, in very positive reviews of scholarly books that usually the reviewer will mention something to the extent of the book being a difficult read, it's written for a scholarly audience. So when you're, when you're looking at publishers, you've really got to decide what audience do you want to hit. Uh, if you want to hit a trade, a very broad trade mainstream audience, uh, don't use words like hermeneutics and, and write a 200 page book that a publisher can, can get into stores. If you're intending on writing a 600 page book um, that uh, will, will be really only of appeal to 300 people throughout the world, then that's, that's the kind of marketing effort that the book is going to have. We'll get it into libraries, we'll get it into specialty areas, but it's not going to be appearing in the front window of every chapter's in Indigo. Um, and it's just a, a harsh reality that not all books are created equal and, and they, will, they, will be, they will receive the marketing that is appropriate for, for each title. Um, we do, of course, uh, in, in the area, era in which we live, electronic marketing is um, something that we're trying to do more of, certainly hitting listservs, uh, email, uh, email campaigns. Uh, and I think at this point I'll hand it over to Claire to talk about more about new initiatives in uh, scholarly marketing.